you. We as believers in Jesus Christ, I know we were talking in Sunday school this morning, we as believers in Christ, we have all the good things if we're believers in Christ. We have all we have all the promises that God made us. And I, I uh, last night I woke myself up preaching. <laughs> yeah. If you're a minister, I don't know, and maybe you sometime or another you may have done that brother Mike. But I woke that step up last night preaching the word of God. And how that uh, uh, we we live in we live in a time of turmoil and uh, we go through uh, we go through this life not knowing that this day that we're living in, what we're going to face tomorrow. What we're going to face, the temptation that we're going to have to go through with tomorrow. What is it that Satan has laid in store for you? And you know, I, I, I uh, last night I woke up and, and, and I, I may not, I may not probably hold you very long this morning unless the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes on me. And if that does, I may preach for two hours. I don't know. But, uh, but, but, you know, I woke up last night and, and, uh, and I, was, I was preaching John 3, 16. And, you know, I, I, think about, I think about this verse of Scripture so many times. That's my plan. That's, right. That's my plan. That's how I know that whenever I leave this world that I have the hope of eternal life. Amen. Everything lays, you know, whenever John began to write, Whenever he wrote John 3, 16, he said, For God so loved the world. Amen. Yeah. Right. For God so loved the world. Now, boy, we can get into some big stuff here. We can, we can go. There, there's, a time, there's a time that God was not pleased with the world. Amen. He seen the world as, as, a, as a conflict. He seen the world as people that hated one another. And 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 it said, and God and I was preaching this other night, and I began to think about this last night whenever I woke up. How did God took the, the people of this world, and sometimes He would destroy them. He would just wipe them off the face of the earth. And how did God? I know I preached this other night, but I want to go back over John three sixteen with you this morning. I was going to read some more scripture, but I'm not going to do it. Hallelujah. I thank God this morning that I have the hope. Amen. That I have love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. Amen. He looked down on this world and sometimes he dealt with the world in pretty pretty rough. Whenever that he would just let the let the earth open up and just swallow them up. But one day, one day he looked down through time and he see everybody that was in this building right now. Amen. Thank you. And for God so loved the world. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And he began to say, look, I've got to do something different. I dealt with them harshly, and it's not done no good. Mm -hmm. I've got to come at it from a different angle. I've got to do something different than what I've always done. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh -huh. yes, and the Word was made by And dwelt among us. And dwelt among us. God had to do something different. Mm -hmm. He had to see us in a different perspective than what he had seen. He had to look at us in a different way. He had to say, look, I've got to give him, I've got to give him a different change. Amen. I've got to put a sacrifice. I've got to make a sacrifice. And I've got to make the sacrifice my son. Amen. I've got to do something different. And through my sacrifice to my son, I'm not going to deal with them physically anymore. Right. There you go. I'm not going to deal with them physically anymore. I'm not going to take
take them out and I'm not going to destroy them. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to give them grace through my son Jesus Christ. They come to me anymore, they won't come to me physically. They will come to me spiritually. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now this is a good one. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. I feel like I'm about ready to go up. But how? Everlasting life. I have this body that I live in. You have yours. The body that you're living in, the body I'm living in, it's not going nowhere. But I have a new body. Hallelujah. I'm going to have a new body. I'm going to have a spiritual mind. I'm going to have a spiritual mind. I'm going to have a mind that I know who God is. I'm going to have wisdom. When I stand before God, I'm going to know who He is. I'm going to know who Jesus Christ is. And I'm going to worship Him. And I'm going to pray to Jesus Christ for who He is. Hallelujah. Do you love Him this morning? Amen. You know, I, I, uh, I remember this. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm not going to talk right now. But remember this. We're going to have a surprise for you tonight. There's going to be something different. I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's going to happen when it happens, okay? Remember this. We're having church here tonight. Amen. You know what I just said? We're having Amen. church here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wasn't going to read no scripture. I'll make it after. <laughs> You got your Bible, so I may I may go just into this. I was into hold off on this, but I think I'm going to go into it just a little bit. I've, I've been speaking to you, but how did God deal with the Hebrews, and how that uh, there was times whenever I know we kind of talked about it this morning in Sunday school. Whenever whenever the Hebrews complained about everything, nothing went on but went off to sue them and. Uh, they, they they tried God. They tried God. It says, and, 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 and if you got your Bible, turn to the book of Hebrews, the third chapter. And uh, I'm going to go into the seventh verse of, that, of the, of the, of the uh, third chapter of the book of Hebrews. It says, It says, Therefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if you will hear his voice, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as, as in the provocation in the days of temptation in the wilderness. And we're talking about whenever the Hebrews was in the wilderness and, and, and so many times. Provocation means temptation. Whenever they would go through temptation, God tempted them. They brought them out, he brought them out of, out of Egypt. But they complained about everything that uh, that happened. They wanted to go back to, to, to Egypt. They thought about the things, the good things, the Egypt. They didn't think about the bad things. They just thought about the good things. And, uh, and even in the scriptures, uh, they thought about the melody that was in Egypt. In other words, they thought about the good things that was in Egypt, but they forgot about the provocation, the temptation, the, the, the trials that they went through when they was in Egypt. See, you to see, today we go through trials and temptations. We go through all kinds of things. There's not a person in this building this morning which I can dedicate them. And I tell you this morning, this week I have went through something. I have went through some kind of temptation. I have went through some kind of trial this week. But you know what? I have something in me that will 
will take me through the trials and the temptations. I have the man named Jesus Christ that I can go to whenever I need something. You know what? That's what God intended for us today. It says, Harden not your heart, as in the provocation in the days of temptation and the wilderness. When your father tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. There you go. They seen what God could do. They seen what God could do. We see what God could do. Therefore, I was grieved with that generation said, They do always hear in their heart, and they have known, not known, my ways. Today that we're living in right now. You know, as a church world as a whole, they don't know. God's ways. They don't know what it is that God has in store for us. Whenever that, you know, we live sometimes, we live sometimes, uh, as we were talking this morning, sometimes we live, we can do it ourselves. Uh -huh. we, we don't need God. We, let me take care of the situation. And sometimes, whenever we try to take care of the situation, Brother Jamie, it don't work out like it would if we took it to the God and said, Here it is. I want you to take care of this. You know what? I don't want to hear in my way. I want you to take care of the situation. But sometimes we get, I know I, I've, been, I've been guilty of this at some one time in, in my life. If you said something out of the way to me, I was going to call your hand to it. And I might, I might not be real easy about it. And it didn't bother me if I heard you speak. Matter of fact, that was the situation I wanted to do. I want you to know how I felt. And if you hurt your feelings, sorry about your love. But you know what? The day that we're living in right now, we're living in a time right now that we have got to get into the spiritual realm of God. The word that we can say, God, we need you in my life. I need you to take control of whatever situation that I'm going through. Now listen. Work with the next day. So I swear in my right, they shall not enter to my rest. Take heed, brother, lest there be in you, in be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. I want to stop right there. Departing from the living God. So many times that I was talking just a few minutes ago, so many times we want to take it on ourselves, Brother Jamie, and we want to say, well, I can take care of the situation. I can take care of the problem. I can bring them out real good, and I can let them know exactly how I feel. That's not what God wants. He wants us to say, not depart from the ways of the living God. Amen. He wants us to be, what we, we went over this many times, He wants us to be to the place that we will hear when He speaks. That's right. Amen. He wants us to be where He can hear. Amen. Take heed, brother, lest you, lest you be in any of your evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exalt him one another day, which is, is called today. Let any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Through the deceitfulness of sin. How many times have we took and we done things we knew that we shouldn't do? You know, I have money, and I'm, I'm sure everybody in this building this morning, some time or another, has done it. I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. If they get in my way, I'm going to walk right over the top of them. How many times have you done that? How many times? Because you know what? The deceitfulness of sin will creep in. It will creep in. Unless we have a spiritual understanding and the discernment of God's Spirit, that sin is going to creep into us, and we're going to do the things that we shouldn't do. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of, the, of our conversation steadfast until the end. Steadfast until the end. My friend, let me tell you something this morning. It is time that the believers in Jesus Christ, and I'm going to call here just in a minute, but it is time that the believers in Jesus Christ came together in one voice. Amen. In one voice. There is that belief. There is so many different people out there. I am not associating you because you're not what I am. Mm -hmm. 
You're not me. You're not what I am. So I came to associate with you. And I was like, whenever I was preaching in my mind, when I woke myself up, I was preaching in a Baptist church. <laughs> No, no, that I was preaching in the Baptist church, but I was telling them it's time that we got away from all this stuff that that has that, 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 that taken us from from believing like I should believe because I don't like the way you believe. It's time that we understood this morning there was only one plan of salvation. Yes. Yes. Jesus Christ died on the cross one time. He will die on that cross again. Amen. He'll not die on that cross again. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ hung there on that cross and he shed every bit of the blood that was in him. He won't do it again. Amen. Not gonna happen. The stone has to roll away. He'll never be rolled away again. No. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. But there's one thing that he said that really gives me something this morning. Whenever he was standing on the mountain and he was talking to 400 people that was around 400 people that were standing there watching him. And he began to tell them what they needed to do. Go into Jerusalem and you tarry there till you be a do the cock and die. Yeah. But the good thing happened on that day. Mm. Right. Yeah. The Bible says that two men dressed in white apparel stood and said, Why don't you stand to your gate in the heavens? Yeah. Right. This is what turns me on. He said, this time, Jesus, yes. that you see go away. Yes. It's, coming back, right? it's coming again. Mm. In right now. Right mm. He went up. He's coming back. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's coming now. Amen. I'll tell you all this morning. I feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I feel the presence of the Lord. Why? Because I know that he's coming back. Amen. He's coming back after me. I know that without a shadow of that. Why do I know that? Because he said so. Amen. Because he said he was coming back. He sent those angels. He dispatched them to that spot. Right. He said, when I go up, you tell me. Mm-hmm. When I go up to heaven, you tell me that I am coming back. Hallelujah. It's through the spiritual realm of God that we're drawn by the Spirit. Amen. I thank God this morning that one morning or one night, one night, in a little house, God began to deal with me. He began to let me know that I was lost, that I needed Him in my life. Amen. I was drawn by the Spirit of God. How many in this morning can raise your hand? But I remember the time that I was drawn by that spirit. Amen. And I gave my heart to him. My goodness. I love the Lord this morning. Amen. I'm, I'm, uh, y'all be out tonight. I'm sure there's going to be, we had some, I think one said they had some visitors here yesterday. They were down cleaning the church and some people that I know, I know both of them well. I grew up with one of them. And uh, they said they'd be coming back to church. So uh, y'all just pray that they'll show up, and uh, and so just pray for them, and pray for our church, keep our church in, in your heart and your mind, and uh, let's just go forward, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's just go forward, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do something. We're gonna do something. All right, all right, everybody, mind you.